In this movie, we are going to try to put together all the concepts that we have been talking about, arrays, functions, conditional statements, to try to create a functional program. In this case, we're trying to create a, mou a mouse follower. So let's go ahead and test this movie out. And you'll see what this does. Basically, we're looking at something that is sort of chasing the mouse as I move my mouse on the stage. So let me go ahead and close this and let's get a new uh, movie clip going, a new program. And I'm going to use Action Script 2 for Action, Action Script 3 for this. So I'm going to use the standard AS3 30 FPS 640 by 480. That works. Let me create a new stage. And for this, let me close the actions first. So what I want to do at this point is I want to create the item that will be following my mouse. In this case, I'm going to create a little circle. I'm going to turn off the visibility of the of the stroke and I'm just simply going to use the center portion of the mouse. So I'm going to make it blue. And I'm going to create a little blue mouse right here, a little blue circle, sorry. Then I'm going to select it and I'm going to turn it into a movie clip. Remember, to turn something into a movie clip, we either go modify, create symbol, convert a symbol, or we press the F8 key on our keyboard. So I'm going to select that, um, that shape and I am going to uh, turn it into a movie clip. In this case, I want my mouse to be this item to be attached to my mouse and I want it to be attached at the center point of where that movie clip would be. Therefore, my registration point should be in the center of my movie clip. I'm going to call this dot with capital D and then I'm going to export it for action script. Remember that exporting for action script basically creates the class for that particular thing and it moves all of the, diff all of the different properties of the movie clip class into that particular class that I am creating. Notice that I made that made sure that the type for this particular movie clip that I'm going to be creating is um, for this symbol, it's movie clip. So make sure that that, that all those things match. If you're sharing for action script, make sure that you are doing it as a movie clip. Then I'll go ahead and click OK on this. And you'll notice that it's going to tell me the same warning. Hey, I don't have a class called dot, but I'm going to create one for you based on movie clip on the movie clip class. And I'll say, OK, that's fine. Go ahead and do that. Now you'll notice that both my registration and my transform points are at the center of my symbol, which is exactly what I want. Now I don't need this on the stage anymore because I already have it on the library and I have it shared for action script, as you can see under the linkage. So let me go ahead and delete that one from the stage so that I don't have anything and let's do the rest via code. So the first thing I want to do is I want to open up my window for actions and then I'm going to declare a variable that's going to house every dot that will be coming in from the library. So that, that as we know we do the keyword VAR which is variable and then I am going to say uh, I'm going to call this dot over here in, in lowercase in this case as you can see. Remember that creating this variable and naming it dot is the same thing as putting an instance of that dot from the library onto the stage and giving it a name under the instance window. So if it's the same as if I were to put this here, went to the properties window, select the object properties and gave it the name dot. Basically does the same thing, but we're not doing this manually. We're doing it dynamically through the code. And so what I want to do now is once that's declared, I'm going to say what kind of class is this? What type of data is this? Well, it's going to be of type dot. And how many am I adding? Well, then if I'm going to be adding one every time I enter the frame, I don't want to declare that the equals new dot here because that would make my variable contain only one variable. And I don't want that to be the case. I want this to be several as the, as the time goes by. So I'm going to press a semicolon to close that. And basically I just, this declares this the variable as a placeholder saying, I'm going to be using something called dot and I'm going to be adding dots from the library onto it, but I'm not doing it just yet. At the same time, I want to have an array to check all of the different dots that I am creating on that I'm adding onto the stage. And the reason for that is because when I add them, I want to keep an eye on them so that when they start shrinking and as they shrink and they go to 0% on scale, then they disappear. And when they disappear, I don't want to be computing for them anymore. So I want to remove them off the stage. This is so that I can save my CPU power. The more things moving on the stage, the more your CPU is working. So you want to remove things that you're not using anymore so that your CPU is not working as hard. And so that your movie, uh, that your program plays back or, uh, you know, uh, uh, executes properly without any delays. 
So to do that, I want to add every dot into an array called dots. So let me create yet another variable. I'm going to call it dots in this case, which is all of the dots. And I am going to make it of type array. And that's where I'm going to be adding my new array. Open close parentheses, semicolon. Now, uh, this line then declares a variable called dots. And each dot that I will be creating later on will be added onto that array so that I can control all of my dots through that array. Now, the next thing I want is probably since I'm going to be, I'm, I foresee that I'm going to be using a for loop to check every spot within my array. I need to have a variable just like with every other uh, for loop we've ever worked with. I'm going to create a variable called I, and that's going to be my counter for the variable. And I'm going to make it of type number, and I'm going to give it the value of zero just to start. That's how I initialize that variable. Now, the first thing I want to do is I want to start adding dots as soon as my movie starts. And to do that, I'm going to add this uh, listener to the stage that is listening uh, constantly. So if I say this dot, automatically this knows that the word this is keyword for the stage because that's where I am right now. I am at the top level. So if I say this, this means scene one at the top level, the main stage. So if I say this and then I'll say add event listener, it's going to tell me, OK, so what kind of an event are you listening for? In my case, I'm listening for an event of type enter frame. And so it, when I itch each time I enter the frame, which means as soon as my movie starts rolling, I am going to be adding a dot at dot. That's going to be the name of the variable I will be declaring momentarily. And so what is that? What does that function look like? I'll say function at dot event of type event and remember that that's because this guy and this guy need to match so the after the colon on the say on say event of type event under the function declaration this and the beginning of the event declaration on the listener need to match so if this was a mouse event here this should say mouse event okay then I close that parentheses, open open the squiggly brackets, hit return so that I get the closing squiggly brackets from the program. And then what am I going to do at this point? I need to start adding dots onto the stage right away. So to do that, I'm going to say dot equals new dot with capital D this time because that's the one I'm adding from the library onto the stage. Remember, I first declared the variable here. Now I am populating the variable here. So first you declare the variable. And if I'm going to have more than one, like I am in this case, I'm going to be adding constantly. Then I add them through the function. Each time I am adding a new dot. Then I can simply go ahead and say add them to the stage if I want to by saying uh, add child, if that's what I want to do. At this point, I don't want to add them to the stage yet. I want them to follow my mouse. So I'm going to say dot dot x equals mouse x dot dot y equals mouse y semicolon let me clear my code there it is and so now if i say now add child add child oops add child dot which is basically each dot remember i'm going through a function each time that this gets called so i'm adding dots as i go each time a dot is added i am adding it to the stage i'm telling it follow my mouse and or add it wherever my mouse happens to be and put it on the stage. So when I run this, I am basically putting dots all over the stage, whatever my mouse is as I enter the frame. Okay. And that works so far. But before I add them onto the stage, I want to add a listener to each dot. And this dot listener is going to be listening for an event of type enter frame, meaning each time I am entering the frame. And what I want to do in this case is I want to scale down that dot. I basically want to uh, shrink the dot. So I'm going to call that dot dot fade. I'm going to be fading the dot. And what that is going, what that function is going to do is going to be checking to see how big my dot is. So for this, oh, and I also need to make sure that it's basically being checked through the array. So before I add the dot to the stage, I want to add the dot to my dots array, the one that I declare on line two. So I want to say here dots, in this case with an S, push. I want to push the every dot that I'm adding onto the array. So on the first pass, there will be one dot inside my array dots. And then I can add it to the stage. 
Now, this function that I just declared on line 11, what, it, what I need to basically declare that outside of the other function. So I need to go out here and say function dot fade event of type event. What that is going to do is going to open brackets, hit return to get a closing bracket. What I want to do at this point then is what what are the conditions? What is the condition for for me to remove this from the stage? And so the condition is I am going to start scaling down my dots each time I enter the frame. So maybe I want to add a value by which I want to decrease the size of my dots as I add them. So I probably need to have some sort of scaling value for the dot. So I'll say right after I tell him to be to follow my mouse right here under line 12, I'm going to hit return and I'm going to say dot dot speed y or speed scale or scale speed or something like that. I'm just going to call SPD just for short equals and I'm going to give it a value of let's say 0 0.05. So it's going by 5%, it's going to decrease the size of the dot by 5% each time. So now under the dot fade function, what I'm going to declare is event dot target dot scale x minus equals event dot target dot spd, which is what we just declared, that little variable that we attached to that dot. So each dot will have its own SPD value and it'll be scaled by that much, by whatever that is, whatever number we put in here. So it's gonna be scaling it down because it's reducing its size. I'm gonna do the same thing for scale Y. So I can just go ahead and copy this line, paste it below it and change the scale X to scale Y. Now, what this is going to do is as they are being added, they're gonna start resizing and going small and then they're gonna start getting bigger in the negative value. So that's where my if condition comes in. So I'm going to say if uh, event target scale, I'm going to be checking for the scale x, scale x is less than or equal to zero, close parentheses, open squiggly bracket, hit return then I need to remove that particular target from the stage. So that's one way to do this. But the most efficient way of doing this is by actually using the array, and that's why we declared the array. So let me go ahead and remove that if statement really quick and actually do a for loop to check each position within the array. So I'll say for open parentheses, i equals zero. Well, i is less than the length of the array, which is dot, dot length. That's the array. Semicolon, i plus plus. Close parentheses, open a squiggly bracket and hit return so that I get the closing bracket for it. So what this statement is saying, I'm gonna create a for loop that's gonna start counting at zero. And I know that my arrays start counting the first position in an array is position zero. So it's gonna say for i equals zero, so I'm gonna be starting from the very first position of the array while i is less than the entire length of the array, okay? While i is less than anything that has been placed in my array, how, however many dots I have pushed into it right here under this line. Then keep on adding to i to go through all of them, through each position. So basically keep on going on that for loop all the way through the length of the array to check each position on the array. Then I'm going to say, okay, let me go ahead and paste this really quick so that we check to see what this is actually gonna do. I just pasted the code to make it a little faster. And so basically at that point, I'm gonna check if the position i, let's say the first position is the value of zero, if dot zero, whatever happens to be on the very first position of the array, meaning the first dot, if its scale is scale x is less than or equal to zero, then uh, go ahead and remove the listener that is fading the dot. Remove that listener from that particular movie clip, whatever happens to be in the zero position of the array. Then remove the display object, meaning remove the actual child from the stage. We don't want to see that on the stage anymore because we don't want the program calculating for something we no longer see. If we are not seeing it anymore, why, why should we execute any calculations on it? Meaning 
make your CPU work less. And then we're going to say splice the array. Now remember that splicing means take the item from the array and then bring everything else back down so that that space is not empty. What One thing I haven't explained about splicing is that what we're looking at when we declare this a line of code like this, one on 26, we're saying is basically check the position i of the array. Since let's say, for example, we're working on the first position right now, dot zero, then it's going to say check the position zero and then remove one item from that position, meaning at zero, remove one item. So you can remove more than one thing by splicing if you needed to. But in this case, we're removing only one item at a time when the condition is met that that item is a scale is less than zero, equal or less than zero. So when that condition is met, that item should be because of the I value being the same, that item is removed from the array. So we're constantly shaving off the array, whatever gets to be equal to or less than zero. So the end result to this exercise is basically when we play this back, we're adding dots and they're being added whenever my mouse happens to be. If I stop moving my mouse, nothing appears to be happening, but I'm constantly adding dots. And when I move, the dots keep on being added behind my mouse. They just happen to be added and they, I'm not telling them to move the mouse, even though I'm calling this, a, I'm calling this a mouse follower. It really is not a mouse follower. Basically all I'm doing is adding stuff, whatever my mouse is. And so if I move my mouse, the little dots that are left behind is where my mouse was a second ago. And they just start decreasing in size until they disappear. And when they disappear, then this line of code says, okay, so if the dot, if that dot within the array dots, happens to be less than zero, less than or equal to zero, then remove the listener so that you don't execute any more code on that particular dot that is less than or equal to zero. Remove the dot, the actual movie clip, remove it off the stage so that we don't have any more overhead on the stage so that your program is not heavy and splice the, the array by looking at what position that dot was in and removing one from the array. So that way you empty up that spot that where the movie clip used to be and then bring everything else back downstream so that your array main uh, remains compact. And so you don't have any empty spaces within the array. So that is the logic behind this little exercise that shows you how to go through a function, how to add a function, how to add a, an if statement and how to make use of a for loop in order to execute an entire program. Now this could be executed as well with timers if you wanted to by using the timers that we talked about when we when we saw the timers movie uh, and, and, and in a combination of items. I mean, you could actually use it whenever you click on uh, on the mouse. If you do a mouse click to add a dot, instead of having the function be an enter frame, it could be a function when you mouse click. So every time you click about the mouse, a, a dot is added and then basically it starts shrinking by checking the position of, uh, by checking the size of that mouse through an enter frame action. So you can, I mean, it's const, It's basically a combination of the different items that we've been seeing that will create the functionality, depending on what your target is based on what interactivity you're trying to present to your users.